Hello everyone, welcome to the first lesson in the second unit. Uh, this is lesson one called Exploring Parallel Lines. Uh, I would like to first of all introduce you to how these videos are going to work uh, and specifically how our class is going to work um, over this uh, semester. So. First of all, you can see above me, I have my name, our logo, and the title of the course, 11 Applied Math. If you are ever on a differently titled video, uh, you know, that happens all the time. There are tons of videos on the channel. Uh, so just, just definitely back up and make sure that you're on ones that uh, say 11 Applied Math and not other math videos. Uh, then you can see me here. Uh, whether you want to or not, I'll be hanging out. And below me is the questions and the notes. And you should also have this, um, you know, as your booklet. If you don't have your booklet with you, you can follow along uh, anyway as it's on the screen. Uh, and then, you know, pick one up when you have a chance. Uh, also, right at the very bottom, you will see Unit 2, Properties of Angles and Triangles. That is the uh, unit title. And then Lesson 1, our lesson title, Exploring parallel lines. So I'll try to have a similar setup each time so that it is easy to follow um, in general. So that's how the screen is going to be set up. Uh, we are also going to um, make sure that we have regular quizzes and tests. So uh, essentially every two lessons there is a quiz or a test. Uh, unit 2 has four lessons. So there would be one quiz after 2.2 and the test after 2.4. We would generally want to have two lessons done per week. So we'd want to be writing a quiz or a test each week. That should be our goal. Two lessons and an assessment. Uh, so it should give us lots of time to ask questions, to practice for you to watch these videos, and then to do those assessments. So if you have any questions about that, I'll explain it in class as well. So that's kind of what our timeline will be like uh, in this class. Uh, you can follow along with me. Uh, we're on page two on the uh, booklet. So we'll get going. So exploring parallel lines. First thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about a few different definitions. This is probably the lesson with the most definitions. So don't worry if it like looks like a lot, it's gonna be a lot less as we move forward. Uh, but we'll just talk about a few things, and some of them might be things that you've seen before, which will be nice. So first is a transversal. So a transversal in this diagram is this red line, and it is a line that crosses more than, uh, or two or more lines at any point. So these blue lines are moving along here, and this red line, the transversal, crosses them. Uh, that is the definition of a transversal, this red line here. Uh, when a transversal crosses, Parallel lines, they create angles. So these are interior angles, A, B, D, and C. Interior because they are between the uh, lines. And here we have exterior angles. Any angles formed by a transversal in two parallel lines that lie outside of the parallel lines. So we have interior and then exterior. And I feel like that is fairly self-explanatory. If we have our lines, just imagine for a second that those are parallel, please. And we have our transversal like that. These are going to be interior. I'll draw four lines right here, right here, here, and here. And then exterior is here. So we have four interior angles and four exterior angles uh, when a transversal crosses parallel lines. And then we have corresponding angles, something that you may have been exposed to before, I believe in grade nine math. Uh, we have parallel lines with a transversal. Uh, corresponding angles are one interior angle and one exterior angle that are non-adjacent and on the same side. So they're not right next to each other. 
uh, but they're on the same side of the transversal. So that would be these two, those are corresponding angles. And this is going to be useful uh, as we're going to uh, talk about situations where maybe we're given this angle right here and we need to find out what the other angles are. So let's continue. Oh, one last thing, uh, a conjecture, and this will be, a uh, term will be used throughout the, the course. A conjecture is, an exp is a testable expression that is based on evidence, but is not yet proved. So uh, if we make an observation and we explain why we think it's that, uh, but it's not a proven reason, uh, that would be a conjecture. So we'll make conjectures throughout the course and then we'll attempt to prove them. That'll be part of it. Let's go to the next page. Okay, so then you can flip your page. We'll obviously be on page three. And essentially in the space that you're given, you'll wanna write the things that I write or similar, maybe more. Maybe you wanna highlight some things. Uh, you'll definitely wanna pause the video and go back. Uh, you know, if it's easier for you to pause the video and write everything down and then go back and listen to the explanation as I'm going through it, that's what you should do. Uh, but we'll do kind of problems together uh, and then you'll be able to practice after. So the first uh, is a question here. A sports equipment manufacturer builds portable basketball systems like those shown here. Uh, these systems can be adjusted to different heights. You're probably familiar with these. Uh, you know, you can raise and lower the height of the um, backboard maybe with a, a turny thing or uh, it's just like a bar that you unhook and you can move it around and hook it into different slots um, they're fairly common so when a transversal intersects two parallel lines how are the angle measures related so we're given an example here with the basketball hoops don't worry too much about what it's what's written there uh, but you'll always want the pole to be vertical 90 degrees with the ground and you'll want the backboard to be completely straight up and down as well. So we can imagine here that we have the backboard and we have the pole and then we're going to have a line that crosses both of those and that right there that is the transversal. The line that crosses both of those and that would be the lines that kind of hold the backboard to the pole. Uh, the line uh, the angles that it makes with the pole and the backboard right here and right here, those are corresponding angles and those are always going to be the same. So corresponding angles when you have two parallel lines are always going to be the same. Now you can lower the backboard, right? You can uh, shift it around so that the backboard is down here and the pole extends up higher and you have the anchors of the backboard connected there. Uh, no matter what angle or what height the backboard is at, it is going to be vertical and the pole is going to be vertical. So we're going to have corresponding angles all the time, uh, no matter which way the backboard is facing. So if a transversal crosses parallel lines, um, the correspond we're going to have corresponding angles that are the same. So understanding their relation, the relationship between these uh, transversals and parallel lines is really very, very important. Let's go down to a more specific example. So example one, use the relationship we observed above to predict the measures of as many angles in the diagram as we can. So hopefully we're going to be able to get all eight and I'll explain our predictions as we go. So uh, we have an angle of 140 given, and I know that angle F is a corresponding angle. Those are parallel lines, and a transversal crosses them. So that means that angle F is also equal to 140 because it is corresponding. Uh, I know that whenever I have a line that intersects another line, it will um, split the 180 degrees of a flat line into two. So I can find out what G is by taking 180 and subtracting F. So G is equal to 180 degrees, subtract F, which is 140, to get 40 degrees for G. Now I can now, like use these two angles, 140 and 40, 
to extrapolate even further. Uh, I have uh, interior and exterior angles that I know are the same. So I know that E is equal to F because they are cor they are corresponding uh, uh, exterior and interior angles. So they are 140 degrees. I know that uh, G and D are the same. So D is equal to G, which is equal to 40 degrees. And we can do the same on the other side. Both A and C would be uh, 40 degrees. And B is 140 degrees. So we can um, use the relationships that we know when we have a transversal that crosses parallel lines to determine all of the angles uh, that we would need to find. All eight of them are given here. Uh, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. Uh, you can pause the video if you're in class and raise your hand and ask me what the heck are we talking about here. Or if you're at home, you can pause the video and send me an email and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. So let's continue on. So when a transversal intersects two parallel lines, the corresponding angles are always equal. Explain why we disagree uh, or agree or disagree. So I'll just put this up here. So I think we can fit it in a smaller space. Um, so I agree because no matter which lines I made across the basketball uh, backboard and the pole, the um, corresponding angles were always the same. Uh, the transversal always crossed parallel lines. So uh, no matter which lines I made with the basketball hoop, the uh, corresponding angles were the same. So as long as the lines are parallel, a transversal crossing them will create corresponding angles that are equal. So we agree with this statement. Uh, it asks us next, did we discover any counterexamples? No. We did not. And what this implies is that our conjecture is true, uh, that a transversal crossing um, parallel lines will create corresponding angles. So no, uh, our conjecture is true. And our last question, when a transversal intersects two lines, and creates corresponding angles that are equal, the two lines are parallel. So kind of what this is saying is a reverse of what we've been doing. Um, so I would agree, I agree, if the lines I draw are not parallel, then the angles will be different. So uh, when a transversal uh, crosses two lines that are parallel, they will be the same. I agree, if the lines I draw are not parallel, the angles will be different. If for whatever reason the basketball backboard was not completely straight, now it's to draw a transversal through uh, the backboard and, and the pole, uh, the corresponding angles would be different. If there was a bolt loose and this was the backboard, and this was the pole, the line that I draw through them does not create corresponding angles. None of them correspond. So it is very important to note that the lines must be parallel. Let's do, I think there's only one more example, and then there's some practice for you to do. So in each diagram uh, is AB parallel to CD. So we have two lines, 
And what we want to know is, is each line parallel to um, the other line? So we are given some angles and we are asked for some others. So let's see. Uh, G and H in example B on the left here are corresponding angles. Uh, so if I can find out what both of those are, I can find out if these two lines are parallel. So G is equal to 180 subtract 113 as we have a line crossing a straight line. So that splits 180 degrees into two parts. So that is 67 degrees for G. So that means if H is 67 degrees, these lines are parallel. H is also 180 degrees minus 113. Clearly gives us the same thing. 67 degrees for G and H. Therefore, and if you haven't seen this before, this means therefore, uh, the lines uh, is it AB and CD are parallel. So because the corresponding angles are the same, we can say that these lines are parallel. You will get better at this and you won't sometimes even need to find out specific corresponding angles. You'll be able to tell uh, if an interior and exterior angle pair are the same, for example. So let's do the next one here. We have A, B, and C, D. We're given an angle 138 and an angle of 41. Uh, angle G is corresponding to angle 41. So let's find out what angle G is, and I'll be able to find out if these two lines are parallel. G is equal to 180. Pardon me. No. Angle G is equal to 138 degrees. And the reason that I know that is because it is a interior angle um, that is clearly opposite of uh, an exterior angle that we know. So an exterior angle and an interior angle that are opposite of one another are equal. So angle G, let's move this up, we can erase that, there we go. Angle G is equal to uh, 138 degrees. I know that because it is opposite of an exterior angle that I know. Uh, we know that we have the angle 41. Uh, did I make a mistake? Oh yes, I need to find out what H would be. Uh, H is corresponding to 138. Forgive me here. All these mistakes are going to stay in because that is how math goes. Uh, sometimes we look at the problem and we don't always see exactly what we need to do. So we try some things, we make some mistakes, and just in my case, it's going to be recorded. So I hope you made it near the end of this video. <laughs> Uh, because you get to see my first uh, mistake and it will not be the only one. So um, what I can find out is if H is what H is because that is corresponding to the angle 138. So H is going to be equal to 180 subtract 41 because we have a straight line with a line intersecting it. So 180 degrees is split into two parts. One of them is 41. The other one is 139 degrees. So that is not the same as 138, and you've probably been able to tell this for a while, but therefore, these lines are not parallel. Okay, so if you have any questions about this, uh, please let me know. Uh, I'm sure you might after I made some mistakes. But that's how math goes. We make mistakes and we just move through them and we correct them. So we have some key points here. The key points will kind of reiterate what I've said about a hundred times in this episode. It's that uh, the transversal intersecting parallel lines will create equal corresponding angles. And then we can find out uh, many different angles from there. Uh, what you need to know is that if it is not parallel, the transversal, these rules, they absolutely do not apply. Uh, so there are practice questions for you to do uh, they are on I guess page six ish uh, but if you have any questions about those as you're going through please let me know after you've done those problems you are halfway to the first quiz uh, so after that check out the second lesson 
and I appreciate you guys watching everyone and I'll see you guys in class. Thanks.